Hello and welcome to a very special edition of Essential Cardano 360, looking back at just some of the news and developments from across the Cardano ecosystem in 2023. Now, before we dive in, please remember, as ever, to like, subscribe and hit that bell icon to get all the latest and greatest news about Cardano in 2024. 2023 was a landmark year for the Cardano ecosystem, and it was all because of you, the community. A global movement of developers, entrepreneurs, and just enthusiasts coming together to build new solutions, businesses, and experiences on rock-solid foundations. From the earliest beginnings in 2015, from Byron and Shelley to Gogan and Basho, 2023 marked the beginning of the age of Voltaire. With the governance journey at the heart of it, we wanted to start by thanking you, the community, for your engagement, your involvement, and relentless building. It's a real honour to be part of this vibrant community. And while we can never hope to do it full justice, hopefully on this show we can capture at least a good flavour of what's been achieved in one place. So as we look forward to an epochal 2024, here's the 2023 Cardano wrap. Throughout this year, the research team at IOG has continued to ideate new advances in distributed ledger technology while setting industry standards through their evidence-based approach. In 2023, the team delivered nine new papers with over 10 universities collaborating with IOG to help advance the world's understanding of transformative technologies and Cardano. All in all, that brings us to a tally of nearly 200 papers submitted by IOG Research. In January's show, Charles and Professor Agalos Kias sat down to talk a little more about the IOG Research journey. And we were also introduced to the Edinburgh Decentralization Index, an independent and open source project created by the Blockchain Technology Lab at Edinburgh University to provide an industry-wide standard for how blockchain decentralization is measured. As an open source tool, the EDI empowers anyone hoping to learn more about different blockchains and different blockchain networks and understand how they compare to others. What's so great about it? <laughs> <laughs> When people usually talk about decentralization, they kind of look at one very specific angle uh, of the system. So for example, they can look at how distributed are the nodes or uh, whether they are dispersed in different geographic location. But it's very important to zoom out, get like a wider, if you want like a bird's eye view perspective about what the system is at all its different layers and all its different facets. Decentralization within blockchain systems is a way of measuring who has different forms of power. And for consumers, for regulators, for other businesses, that's not easy to check. It's not easy to verify how that power is distributed. We believe in transparency. We want people to have all the information they need and not have to go through companies' websites that probably obscure the information. We, as researchers, will do our best to get data from the blockchains and parse them, make them simpler for everyone to understand. The Edinburgh Centralization Index will be basically a score. A stratified set of metrics that measure how power is distributed across many different layers of a blockchain system, from who owns the tokens, through to who owns the consensus and mechanisms, through to who develops the software that it's based on. It's a principled way to look at this concept of decentralization in a way that is verifiable, in a way that someone can see the methodology that was followed and could see the data that were used and can also verify the computation with which we arrived at the particular assessment of decentralization at any given time. The goal of the Edinburgh Centralization Index is to empower users to make informed decisions. They can see whether it's decentralized or not, or rather how decentralized it is, and base their decisions on that. The Edinburgh Centralization Index will inform users about how secure blockchain systems are because decentralization relates to security in many ways. It will tell users how far a certain blockchain is or close to a single point of failure. It will say how susceptible it is to certain attacks. For example, the higher the decentralization of a blockchain system is, 
the less vulnerable it is to certain attacks. We want to put this to work. So we want to develop a system that measures in a live manner the centralization of different systems and presents it to the end user. For now, they only have the promises of different blockchains and cryptocurrencies, but there is no data to back it. The type of research that Input Output does is research that is based on first principles. The type of uh, research work that you will see coming out from researchers that work at Input Output is research that looks at problems um, you know, from a very um, neutral academic perspective, trying to solve them in the best possible way, independently of minor elements that you might think like, oh, this is important at that particular point in time, or we try to optimize this particular element. The real issue here is solve the really hard problems of the space uh, following a first principles approach. And Input Output has for many years pioneered this perspective in the blockchain space as a company. It's very interesting to work with researchers at the Blockchain Lab. The way they work, and the way they can see into the future and make a plan. It's very inspiring for me. It's quite fun. Researching this area is quite fun. So congratulations to Agalos and the team on a great 2023. And there's lots more to come in 2024, with a host of leading academic conferences already in the calendar and look out for more news on the progress of the EDI soon. With some 80 million transactions, over 3,000 stake pools, some 4.5 million wallets, numerous new projects launched and many more busy building, Cardano is here for the long haul and the ecosystem continues to grow. But don't just take our word for it. The Masari team published their Q4 2022 report early in the year and continued charting ecosystem growth throughout 2023. So check out some links below to see those reports and you can look forward to a Q4 report in early 2024. We've also added a few links to various community platforms where you can track ecosystem progress, including Cardano Blockchain Insights, eutxo.org, PoolTool, Explorer, Cardano Cube, and much more. As we weathered the colder winter months, February had some added sparkle with the Valentine upgrade. With interoperability at the heart of the Cardano mission, the small but mighty upgrade introduced new cryptographic functions to the Plutus language to support primitives used by other blockchains. Essentially, we opened up Cardano to suitors of all kinds, empowering developers to use their preferred primitives while benefiting from the inherent benefits of Cardano. So maybe not the monogamy usually associated with Valentine's Day, but very much in the spirit of interoperability and collaboration that Cardano has always strived for. And in the spirit of interoperability, OneChain launched the first cross-chain bridge for Cardano. This solution allows for the transfer of assets and data between different blockchain networks without the need for a centralized intermediary. While the initial launch was in the pre-production environment only, it helped pave the way for the mainnet launch later this year. The early spring also ushered in the kickoff to the SIP1694 Global Workshops in Colorado, where community members had the opportunity to come together and discuss their perspectives for what the future of on-chain governance should look like. With community collaboration deeply rooted in Cardano's foundations, these workshops were an important step creating a true self-sustaining system built on community contribution and consensus. Let's take a look back at some of the highlights from that workshop. The Age of Voltaire is all about governance, fully unlocking the Cardano community's contributions to create a self-sustaining system. So we're here today at IOG's offices in Colorado, co-hosting a special technical workshop with the Cardano Foundation and Emergo. And joining us, we've got a small, but we hope representative group of community contributors. What is interesting about Voltaire is that we can have this conversation now between the technical decisions that are made and the rest of the community. The root of all successful governance is making sure that every voice is heard. How do we express the will of everyone in the Cardano ecosystem? How do we move beyond this initial bootstrapping phase? We need to make a constitution. How do we do that? So SIP 1694 is a Cardano improvement proposal named after the birth year of the French Enlightenment.
government thinker Voltaire, and it's a key component of Cardano's next generation of governance, which is now being designed and community co-created. So the way that it works is we do discussions within our table, and then we do roundtable discussions with the whole group, and those kind of sparks of ideas have been really fantastic. The problem when you build these things in isolation is that you tend to be a bit in your own head, and then sometimes you, you get stuck on a particular solution. And by bringing a larger group of people in that look at it from a clean slate, you find significantly simpler ways of doing things that accomplish the same outcome that you want to achieve. So the simplification has been a godsend. So the SIP will deliver the key on-chain mechanisms that will further empower democratic decision-making across the whole ecosystem. And with this workshop, we're capturing input and looking to take full advantage of the Cardano community's incredible hive mind and sharing the outputs, of course, with the wider community as we continue on that journey to move the SIP towards validation and ultimately implementation. Whenever you start a project like this, it's going to be necessary to have a bootstrapping phase. But as we grow, as we expand the protocol, we need to find ways to have more governance, more ways of hearing the, everybody's voices that will be sustainable for not just you know a few years, but the next 100 years. I think what's critical is that we build a strong institution that really is drawing from the community in, in a broad, uh, diverse way. Now that we've got this group of people in this room, they're passionate, they're devoted to this process, they're actually trying to move this needle forward and we're doing it in a, in a directed way, in a guided way, but that's open to every viewpoint that's in the room. The promise of that Voltaire and a truly decentralized governance mechanism on chain is the most important part of Cardano that we have to get right. It's very difficult to kind of capture everything that you would want for a perfect system to work right at the start. So I think it's just very important to have this mindset of iter like an iterative approach, future-proof design. I think governance is something that we're going to need to evolve. So we'll probably start with a minimal viable governance and then we will be able to build on top of it. Nothing is really getting decided here, but it's laying the foundation for the decisions that'll get made later. So we're talking about topics such as enhancing participation, DREPs, voting thresholds, community tooling, and much more, drilling down into the current SIP and moving it forwards. And of course, we couldn't invite everybody today, but it's really just the first step. We hope we've got good representation from across the community, from educators, developers, SPOs, academics. Ultimately, this process is all about embellishing that participatory governance function for Cardano, built on the three pillars of legitimate institutions, constitutional representation and democratic consent, so that everyone in the ecosystem has a chance to become an active contributor and influence the further ongoing evolution of Cardano. So the whole community will be rallying around Voltaire this year and this workshop is a, is a crucial early step in that journey. Thank you again to everyone who participated in those workshops. And on a personal note, it's been incredibly rewarding getting to meet so many of you throughout the year at workshops and events to discuss and collaborate on how we can all grow Cardano together. The building out of new tooling and language options to improve the Cardano developer experience has been one of the key themes of the year. And we've seen incredible progress from the community. March saw a number of community projects sharing some exciting updates, but Lucas Rosa, one of the co-founders of Akin, joined us on the show to share more on how Aiken is empowering developers. Let's have a reminder. Thank you. I'm really happy to see you on the show and thank you for joining. Can you tell us more about yourself and about Aiken? I'm Lucas Rosa from Miami, Florida, and I'm one of the creators of Aiken. Aiken is a new programming language that's been specifically designed to improve the development experience of Cardano. It's easy to learn, it includes many features that developers have come to expect in a modern language, and it's designed to be easy to integrate with other languages and tools. How can community get in touch or find out more about ICANN? The community can stay in touch and up to date by going to our Discord, where we're very active and even discuss development there. We have a website with tutorials if people are interested in getting started. 
If people are interested in contributing, they can go to GitHub and open issues, submit pull requests and start discussions. And we also have a Twitter where we update regularly about the project. We introduced you to or caught up with many projects building on Cardano in interviews this year, and we could never hope to compress everything that's been going on into our monthly shows. So be sure to check out some of them via the 360 playlist on YouTube if you've got any downtime over the holiday period. Entering the mid-spring, we saw a resurgence in activity, and at IOG, for us, that meant taking a deeper dive into scalability for Cardano. In April, the Hydra team reached a critical milestone, becoming mainnet compatible. As a scalability solution for Cardano, Hydra aims to increase transaction speed through a lower latency and higher throughput, all the while minimizing transaction costs. IOG lead software engineer Sebastian Nagel shared more. If you don't know Hydra, it's a family of layer two protocols. So our goal is to make Cardano possible to grow and increase its adoption by making it more scalable. So in our case, we hope to help Cardano achieve its goal, making it more flexible in several use cases where you need fast and cheap transactions. And we do that by um, building several protocols to, to make uh, these situations possible. The Hydra Head protocol is the first of these uh, building blocks, as we would call them, to enable applications to offload some of their transactions from the global Cardano network into more local contexts where the transactions is only run by interested parties or involved parties of an application such that we can go faster and cheaper. And so in this Hydra Head protocol, we have recently marked or reached a big milestone. And so the first Hydra head was opened on the mainnet, on the Cardano mainnet, uh, late March. And the version we currently release, uh, version 010, will be the first version which can run Hydra on the Cardano mainnet. I want to use this opportunity to, to kind of stress again that Hydra is not a network upgrade. So there is no hard fork, there's nothing really the whole network is waiting on and, and kind of just flipping a switch and everything is fast. Hydra and especially the head protocol is one software component in the end. It's something applications need to be using such to leverage this way of processing transactions in a different way on a layer two way. And that being said, we have this version 010 now available. It is not 1.0 as you might have noticed, right? This is kind of indicating that it's not done yet or it's not super fleshed out finished product, but it is a very good starting point uh, if you have been holding off exploring hydra up to this is really now the point where you should get started working on it exploring it it can run and it will run now on mainnet from all our continuing releases our next focus here really is to be more driving the development of hydra more by user needs and this is why we want to also indicate that yeah we are if it needs to be, we change the APIs, we change and add features if needed to incorporate uh, user requirements. As we have recently reached a milestone of mainnet compatibility, this would kind of correspond to our objective of having a mainnet application uh, out in this year. We will be focusing a bit more on driving uh, use cases and driving adoption of Hydra through use cases. Either through projects we, we will conduct ourselves uh, within the Hydra community, the existing Hydra community, whether it be about Hydra payments, um, using Hydra for auctions or, or voting situations. These will be driving projects, um, motivating features we've put on our roadmap, expand the, the feature set and flexibility of uh, using the Hydra head protocol. And as spring trucked along, the Q1 2023 report from Masari was released. Despite difficult headwinds across the industry, the vitality of the Cardano ecosystem could be felt far and wide. And the Cardano Foundation's annual report offered an important contribution to help illustrate that. Let's take a brief look back at Frederick Grigard, Cardano Foundation's CEO, his thoughts on the report and where he saw Cardano going in the year ahead. So from a technical infrastructure support to spreading knowledge and established target partnerships and collaborations, it's been a really, really busy year. But I think actually in a certain way, the annual report or the transparency report is actually one thing we've been working on for one and a half, two years. And what we really want to do is we want to sort of start the year and saying, you know, what is it we would like to achieve? What is the hypothesis and where are we going? And then trying and be a bit accountable towards did we do all the things we set forward to do? 
but also kind of take some learnings out of it and say, you know, what can we do different and where do we need to stop? So as you probably saw, we did a full rework of the SIPs process. It was important for us that we divided that and kind of upgraded that to the best standard from open source software. We were working hard on the developer portal in terms of wider documentation, in terms of also showcases. And what's so special with the showcases is that the community signs it off based on an approach on GitHub. So it's nearly like an editorial committee. And it's not about having as much as possible. It's about having as much diversity as possible. So if you're looking for a special operating model, you don't need to go through you know, a ton of different similar operating models. You can really start piggybacking on saying, you know, this is how smart contracts has been deployed in that kind of use case. One of the other areas that's also covered in the report is around collaborations and partnerships. Maybe you can outline some of those and, and why they matter. One thing we emphasize in there is a, is a collaboration with the university and it's, um, it's the University of Zurich. And they were also very present at the Kidano Summit. And I would like to emphasize, you know, I think IOG is the best ecosystem partner there could ever be in terms of academic research. So why is it we are partnering up with the university? Now, we're doing that out of two things. One thing is that for the first time in human history, we are not protecting the data in the same way as we saw in the centralized systems. And that means that suddenly you have free access, whether it's human readable or not, is not the thing, but you have free access to see how data congregates and how things come together. Now, another partner which we are highlighting in there is of course the uh, agricultural use cases we have with a, a nation state. And uh, we're super excited that we've gone further than just putting agricultural products on the blockchain, but we are now taking that to the next level where we're actually having this supply chain solution being signed off. And that means that we're now working around verified credentials, DITs, but also um, in the old time we call it Oracle solutions, right? So we're really talking about how do we, we change the narrative of how you use the blockchain for different use cases. So what we did last year, which is also mentioned in the report, is that we, we worked together with the World Trade Organization, we worked together with the World Economic Forum and also the World Bank and UN and so forth. We've been working with regulators around the world and policymakers for quite some years now and we put forward that hypothesis that wherever you are in the world it must be possible to operate with ADA without kind of thinking about am I in a legal vacuum here, you know, am I allowed to hold ADA, can I deploy ADA, what can I do with it, right? So obviously we are, we're working quite close with, with IOG uh, around Voltaire, but also with the community around, uh, you know, the expression of Voltaire. But we actually think that governance starts even earlier than that. And what we see is that not only is our community really talking a lot about Voltaire, but we see all these external stakeholders like governments and nation states and Fortune 500 companies, but also very simple companies like a, like a fintech company with 100 people. They have a huge interest in understanding these incentive mechanisms. And I think that's where we look at it from where we're coming from. And I think that's, that's you know, incredibly important. And I would not be surprised if, if somebody will actually get a, a Nobel Prize based on some of the work which is done on governance and blockchains. And who knows, it might be Kirano. With the cool, breezy days of spring coming to a close and the heat beginning to rise as summer quickly approached, May was a busy month with a number of community projects celebrating new milestones and the continuation of SIP 1694 workshops. Things were definitely heating up. The age of Voltaire advances participatory governance for the Cardano ecosystem, and at the heart of that is individual democratic consent. In May, the team sat down with Pi Lanningham of Sunday Swap to get his perspective on minimal viable governance and the SIP 1694 workshops helping to define it. It was a real pleasure to be flown out to Colorado for the Longmont workshop. There was so many great people from the Cardano community there. Obviously not everybody, you know, but um, it was really great being there kind of at the start of that Voltaire kickoff. And there was just such an energy of kind of a, a beginning and defining the question. And it's really great to see it kind of roll into this whole set of community workshops to continue not just asking those questions, but now starting to answer the questions that we that we started to ask there. MVG or minimum viable governance is a really interesting idea that we could rabbit hole ourselves or nerd snipe ourselves into oblivion trying to design the perfect system, right? And so the idea that we as a community can take this problem iteratively 
and bootstrap ourselves into a simple, minimal system and then iterate on from there is really exciting and really beautiful to me. And so what I see at the end of the road here is defining something and achieving something that puts power into the hands of the community, maybe not in the ideal way or like the you know perfect 10-year plan way that some people might want to work directly towards, but in kind of that first step that we can then iterate on and start building that 10-year plan. Um, and I think that that's going to be a really powerful way to approach this problem and it's going to allow us to build a much more robust governance in the long term because we can start to see how things are playing out in the real world. And talking of collaboration, the UTXO Alliance is a collaboration of layer one blockchains and other projects that share a technical interest deeply rooted in the UTXO paradigm with a mission of advancing the technology to make it more scalable and find better paths for interoperability. They came together for their latest update to the community, highlighting the importance of engagement and collaboration to help drive grassroots movements. Summer was definitely heating up, and with one of Cardano's best known projects, World Mobile, continuing their work across Africa and announcing an expansion into Asia and the US. The unstoppable Mickey Watkins, CEO and founder of World Mobile, the first mobile network built around a blockchain and run by the people to connect everyone everywhere, shared some of the work his team has been focused on. I'm Mickey Watkins, I'm the CEO and the founder of World Mobile. World Mobile is driven as a new economic model to incentivize people to put down infrastructure where there isn't none. Half the planet's unconnected, more than half the planet are underserved, and we have a solution via a sharing economy which we're executing right now. So we started off in Zanzibar a couple of years ago, fine tuning and making the sharing economy work. And I'm very proud to say that today the sharing economy is standing up on its own. That sharing economy is now moving to other places such as Kenya, Mozambique, Nigeria, and a few other countries that are on the roadmap too. We've launched in Pakistan as well, and the most impressive part there is a cookie cutter approach. So we don't actually have any men or, or women on the ground, so no boots, no trucks, and the sharing economy is actually growing very well in Pakistan. So we're very proud of what we've managed to bring and give birth to in East Africa that's now being exported to the rest of the world. The key thing is, is there's a demand. There's a demand for, for internet. Everybody wants high speeds, low cost, available internet. So the demand is the same everywhere we, we go, whether that's Europe or any of the other continents we're on. Yeah, I mean, on the subject of growth, I think last year you also announced some work in the US as well. What's happening there? US is super exciting for both our aerial network and our ground network. We actually have four or five markets that we're entering into right now. And uh, it's happening as well. A slight different model than the model that we're running in East Africa or the run model that we're running in Pakistan. But it's still the same, the same subject, still the same, the same thing, just enabling people to be able to jump onto the network in a slightly different way. Now, World Mobile's news wasn't the only excitement from June. The product team at IOG announced that Marlow, a set of tools that makes it easier to build a smart contract on Cardano, was mainnet compatible. An exciting and important step in empowering developers by creating easier on-ramps for anyone looking to build on Cardano. The SIP 1694 workshops continued as the community prepared for the final workshop to be held in Edinburgh at the end of the summer. Ahead of the final wrap-up in July, the Cardano Foundation and Emergo hosted their own workshops in Zurich and Japan, reinforcing the importance of community engagement, involvement and participation in the process. And last but not least, Catalyst Fund 10 launched, which included the largest ever ADA fund for community projects, helping to build out the Cardano ecosystem. With over 50 million ADA, Project Catalyst, the world's largest decentralized innovation engine, community members had an opportunity to submit proposals for consideration to help develop and advance the Cardano ecosystem. We took a summer break in July from Essential Cardano, but not sadly because we were all on a beach somewhere, but because we were all in the thick of it in cool, inclement Edinburgh with the culmination of the SIP 1694 workshops. Throughout the previous six months, the community hosted over 50 workshops with over a thousand people participating, coming together to discuss the future of governance for Cardano. Alongside these important discussions was the birth of Intersect, Cardano's members-based organization. The ongoing work from the Cardano SPO community didn't slow down either over the summer with the Mithril beta launch on mainnet, giving a strong showing of SPO support. One chain were back on the show talking about the new bridge connecting Cardano to 11 blockchain networks. Plus, with the announcement of Midnight's incoming DevNet, it was an exciting month. 
Oh, and let's not forget that according to Masari's Q2 2023 report, the average daily DAP transactions were up 49% quarter over quarter. Of course, who could forget the slew of events that the community would be attending over the course of the next few months? It might feel like a lifetime ago, but Rare Evo in Colorado was just a few months ago, bringing together hundreds of people from across the Cardano ecosystem and other blockchains to champion the work going on in our industry. It was also an important milestone in the governance journey to celebrate the conversations and decisions made during the final SIP 1694 workshop in Edinburgh, while also meeting member-based organization Intersect at its first event post-launch. But before we dive into September, let's hear from a few of you that attended Rare Evo. So hello and welcome to warm, sunny Colorado. We're here at Rare Evo, just a stone's throw from the Rocky Mountains. I think somewhere over there, IOG is here, the Cardano Foundation is here, Emergo is here, Intersect, the new Cardano members-based organization is here. And we're here to talk Voltaire, we're here to talk governance, to introduce the developer community to SanchoNet, and of course, to meet the Cardano community. MLabs is a consultancy that offers a wide range of services. Our bread and butter is development of um, sort of bespoke or custom applications that clients come in, come in. They tell us about you know what their vision is, what their product that they want to create for people are is, or what user flows they want to kind of provide to, to uh, the community. The feeling is uh, is is very optimistic. I think uh, people are. People are feeling like, okay, we have that breather to finish building and maybe kind of be ready in time for the next bull run. It's exciting because last time when the bull run was here, um, everybody was rushed to, uh, you know, to deliver on the promises they, ma they made before the bull run is done, right? Now, though, the projects that managed to somehow fundraise either during the bull run or during even the winter, um, they have the breathing space to be able to calmly approach it, right? and just like take their time, make sure it's a quality product and queue it up so that when the spark, you know, flies, then, you know, it's go time and everybody's ready for it and we can just roll things out and yeah. So uh, Intersect and Voltaire means a lot uh, to M-Labs and a lot of the other um, entities that have emerged on Cardano um, because We've matured as an ecosystem, and now I think we have um, companies and organizations beyond the big three, Cardano Foundation, Emergo, and IOG, who are ready and willing to take on the mantle of governing the future of Cardano. And speaking on behalf of M-Labs, we're excited to get involved. I'm Matt Plowman, uh, Steve Fisher, CTO. We are building the USDM fiat-backed stablecoin on Cardano. It's a Cardano native asset that's backed one-to-one -one with USD and a US bank account. And we have integrated the Charlie 3 Oracle into the monetary policy so that every USDM that's minted is on-chain verified to have sufficient reserves backing it. And so as we work through the process of launching the regulated product being the stablecoin, perhaps other regulated products coming through in the future, we can really be a, a, a formalizing force on the blockchain to help with Cardano's adoption outside of the crypto-centric universe. Through Intersect, we hope that our contribution can be one that brings a perspective from both worlds. My name is Patrick. I'm the founder of Endmaker. Um, I started Endmaker two and a half years ago in Cardano, and we made 25% of all tokens on the chain. I think the, the part that I'm most proud of is basically that Endmaker has enabled so many other projects to just enter the space. We're behind so many projects, right? And that's really great because we are empowering other people and that just feels amazing. Like, it's not about our success, it's really about the success of the ecosystem as a whole. I believe that tooling and infrastructure for governance is extremely important uh, because by by the right tooling, you are setting the tone of the governance. So I believe like if we if we start and we build the right tools from the beginning that just enable transparency and enable you to just 
really engage with the governance on a deeper level. For me personally, Voltaire is extremely important. You know, that's the reason why I came to Cardano in the first place. I believe in that like, whole decentralized governance uh, idea. Um, and I think it's, it's opening up so many opportunities now. It's, uh, of course, funding gets available for Cardano, but it also just, it's the first step towards like a global government, right? And that's a really empowering thing. It's a government that is not, not bound to any country, but it's actually just bound to the people using the network. And that's amazing because you can do so much with it. The Indigo team has been focusing a lot more recently on open source contributions. So we've been working really close with the Icon team, support, uh, supporting um, issues, writing PRs. In addition, we've also uh, written a de uh, open source DEX SDK. So you can interact with MinSwap, um, Muesli Swap, Sunday Swap, um, Wi-Fi all using a TypeScript SDK with whatever backend you want to use. And that's all open source, and uh, we've seen a lot of community collaboration about that. One of the things about Hydra that we've yeah, yeah. learned is how they've done this open collaborative project management um, cycle. Yeah, yeah. And, and that's been um, it's been a very good opportunity for us to see how can we take that idea and integrate it into our own like community and getting our community involved in the development of our smart contracts, our off-chain infrastructure, stuff like that. So we're, we're really like pleased with the Hydra team and their, um, the way they've done open source project management and just open source in general. Um, and we, we, we're trying to take some ideas from that and trying to learn from them. From the communities that I've worked with in the Cardano ecosystem, it just makes me feel um, very confident just, you know, for the three years that I've been involved, um, the amount of progress that the dev community has made, and um, not even just the dev community, but the other, you know, just the, the community leadership and the teams making good choices and things has really developed a lot. Um, I'd say um, it, it surprised me, especially in the last year, uh, how quickly everything has started to move and how much progress we've been able to see. So it makes me feel really confident. So I'm Sam Leathers. I'm head of product for Cardano Core Tech at IOG, and I am the one that's mainly responsible for launching SanchoNet, which is our testnet network for SIP 1694. With 1694 on testnet, I, I think that it's really exciting for us to be able to start experimenting with delegated representatives. We all need to be a part of this. If we're not all a part of it, then it, it doesn't work, right? We believe one of the keys to the success of Voltaire will be that the individuals understand their responsibility within that system. This is the realization of, of a philosophy. This is actually us creating this digital nation. Looking back at Rare Evo, it's been fantastic to see how deeply the community has embraced the ongoing conversations around governance. And they're conversations that came to life with the launch of SanchoNet, the testnet environment that allows anyone to play around with the governance features from SIP 1694 in a safe sandboxed environment. In September, SanchoNet added DREP support, further expanding usability for the wider ecosystem. And in an effort to help global understanding of Haskell, Plutus and Marlowe, the IOG education team was once again in Africa to participate in a 10 week program with the Africa Blockchain Center in Nairobi, helping to educate new developers on the underlying core technologies powering Cardano will ultimately help create easier on ramps and expand use cases as new innovations are incubated and deployed across the ecosystem. Finally, who can forget the overwhelming display of community involvement with the conclusion of Catalyst's Fund 10 in September. With over 50 million in ADA funding at stake and more than 1,500 ideas submitted, a total of 192 received approval and support from the community to move forward and proceed with their ideas. And in the spirit of community-driven innovation, the Project Catalyst team at IOG submitted its very first proposal for consideration empowering the community to decide who and how they wanted Project Catalyst to be administered moving forwards. And on behalf of the whole team, thank you very much for putting your trust in the IOG team to carry on the work that they've been doing. I know Chris Danny and the rest of the Project Catalyst team at IOG are continuing to incorporate new improvements that you've identified to continue making Catalyst the strongest and most representative decentralized innovation engine ever. Cardano has consistently ranked as one of the top blockchains for NFTs, and this creative, passionate community came together to celebrate at NFT XLV in Las Vegas. IOG, the Cardano Foundation, Intersect, and many others 
all came out to champion the great work that these innovators have done. Here's a few highlights from that event. The event's been so fantastic. Uh, everybody's been having a great time. Everywhere you look, there's connections forming and people uh, celebrating one another. I'm blown away. Uh, every time we see these community events happen, I'm blown away. Project Noom is all about music distribution, bringing royalties on chain for musicians, artists, fans. So what makes the Cardano community so special? Uh, I think it's that it's the camaraderie of the community. Everybody is willing to help out everybody else. So like at Noom, we do a lot of open source stuff. People come by the booth, even if they're not interested in what we're doing, they can use a lot of our tools and utilities to help their own project. That community of sharing is very pervasive on Cardano. When I first came into the ecosystem, there was a small little joke that there was probably three or seven women in the ecosystem. And I was actually inspired by a Twitter space on the Ethereum side that had over 100 women in the space talking about crypto. And it was rather the opposite of everything that social media was showing to me that women were slow to crypto, women were slow to technology. And it was quite an insult at the time. So I wanted to prove otherwise that there was a space for women in the ecosystem. And at the same time, giving an opportunity for men to see and hear the perspectives from the other side. If you break it down to the basics, it's understood by everyone. And I think that's it's a fair game to have both genders in the ecosystem. My name is Mick Blackwell. I'm the founder for Blitz TCG, a trading card game on Ergo, Cardano, and the Nervos blockchains. So all three of these blockchains, the reason I support them and, and I advocate for them and I come to conferences like this is because I very much agree with their strategy, right? Build first, build for the people that need the technology. Cardano, for example, right? They're not just working with developed countries, they're working with developing countries, right? They don't just care about if you have money, they care about solving the problems that can be solved with the blockchain itself which nobody, see, everyone seems to have <laughs> forgotten about that, right? Like, what was the point? Like, what, why do we make these, now there's what, like two, 300 blockchains? What do they all even do, man? Like, what problems are they solving? You know, it's, anyways, I like that Cardano, it always seems like, whenever you hear about Cardano, it's almost always in relation to a problem that they're solving. And even like Zengate with, with Palmyra, that's both on Ergo and Cardano, they're solving the problems associated with T-Trade, right? So there's like these real tangible things that you can show people. So some of the things being discussed here at the show have been the off-chain mechanisms, the institutions, the constitutional journey, but also the on-chain mechanism, SIP1694, the GovTool, SanchoNet. All of these things will help enable and empower the Cardano community of builders and ADA holders to truly thrive in a new age of governance. We are here today to show to the community the first implementation of the Voltaire GovTool. GovTool really fulfills that third pillar of democratic consent alongside SIP1694. Uh, it's going to enable minimum viable on-chain governance uh, and allow for voting, allow for community participation uh, in a much more robust uh, and participatory way. I'm Jack Briggs. I'm part of the bootstrapping team at IOG, helping to get Intersect off the ground. So there are five pillars to uh, Intersect. And those five pillars are typically going to be the structure to how Intersect does what it needs to do. Essentially, it's going to be first there for its members to have member network opportunities for events, to be able to amplify members' successes and contributions to the ecosystem. Secondly, it's going to administrate and champion Cardano's on-chain governance, as described in SIP 1694, essentially providing strong off-chain processes to drive better on-chain outcomes. Then thirdly, we have the coordination of the Cardano vision roadmap that will be community approved via a governance action on chain and uh, members will themselves deliver that roadmap and that's what's fantastic about Intersect, the distributed nature of it all. Then uh, fourth we've got the um, maintaining and uh, delivering the continuity of Cardano and that's sort of the now, how do we keep it secure and stable and all that kind of stuff. There's lots of work that happens all the time in this regard and, and number four is going to hit that. Uh, and finally um, Intersect will champion and develop Cardano's open source best practices and approach into the future and we're already seeing that now with the open source committees uh, doing its thing. 
So a shout out to everyone involved in making NFT XLV such a great success. The Atala Prism team has been taking some time out from the public spotlight, but has been grinding away all through 2023 on the next iteration of Atala. In October, we had a chance to sit down with new general manager, David Harding, who gave us an inside look into the work his team has been focused on. I've been with IOG now for just a short three months, but it's been quite a journey to get here. I have over 35 years of professional experience from engineering to 25 years in executive C-level management in public and private companies, international companies as well. And I have over 20 years experience in digital identity itself. I've worked in areas such as uh, law enforcement and government, airport security, border control, registered traveler programs for people who are crossing borders uh, in, in visiting countries, done a, several national ID and driver's license programs. I really love being part of this excellent tribe. I feel very privileged. It's filled with incredibly skilled and professional members. I have found IOG to be an absolutely incredible and collaborative place to work. And I was given the opportunity to really lead digital identity in, in IOG, I and mean, I am a digital identity, privacy, and security wonk. Well, Atala Prism is a self-sovereign identity platform and service uh, suite for verifiable data and digital identity. We offer core infrastructure for digital identity issuance, verification, and management. It's built on the W3C or the World Wide Web Consortium's global specification for decentralized identity. And decentralized identity and self-sovereign identity really are, are very much the same thing. It, what Atala Prism does as a platform is it empowers users to have control over their identity, their personal information, how they present it, and then how they share or consent to share that information with others. So why do we need it? Well, in the traditional world that we've been so used to in Web2, we don't own our digital personas. Everyone else does, in fact, you know, whether that be our social media services that we use, big tech, banking, healthcare, even our employers with our enterprise digital personas. We don't have control over those. And because we don't have control over our, our identity, our identity data is used, managed, et cetera, it can be sold, it can be abused, it can be stolen. So really self-sovereign identity flips the script. It puts control back in our hands, thus the self-sovereign part of identity. As we work forward in creating a decentralized internet, identity is still at the very core of everything that we do. And operating in a trusted way within global economies, with institutions without fear of personal information being shared that isn't necessary, the fact that we can consent, the, the fact that we can decline to consent to share information is really important. I love the example that, you know, you go to present your identity to get a service. You literally have to present almost everything. When you present your driver's license, when you present some sort of government issued ID, there is so much information that is collected, doesn't necessarily need to be collected. Self-sovereign identity gives us control over how much information we consent to share at any given time. Education really is a good use case for self-sovereign identity as a whole. And what we've done with the Ministry of Education with Ethiopia really was the first real world impl implementation of the Atala Prism platform. Really what they were trying to do was modernize student registration and integrate that with the national ID system. So what Atala Prism is responsible for is issuing verifiable credentials to students once they are enrolled. Now this is a really good example of how Atala Prism as a platform can enable an application to become identity aware. We are a provider of a digital identity service that provides self-sovereign identity capabilities. Really, that's the model we're gonna build on, is to be that digital identity provider, that platform that enables applications, whether they be dApps, other services, other platforms, to become digital identity aware. The Atala Prism tribe has been working diligently on upgrading the Prism platform from 1.4 to version two. And version two follows the W3C standards very closely for self-sovereign identity and the decentralized identifier work group standards. That is incredibly important because those standards as defined by the W3C are being accepted globally. 
So a Tala Prism is going to be able to provide capabilities that meet those standards and meet those requirements. Now, the future for Atala Prism as a whole is very bright. So we are going to be working closely with Cardano community members who are building new platforms, new features, new services, new decentralized applications, and help make those products identity aware. And we're going to be adding new features that will bridge the gaps between Web 2 and Web 3. As I said, life is always an evolution, not a revolution. So we're going to be building technologies that allow for these older Web 2 technologies and the way digital ID is managed to the Web3 world, to the decentralized world, so that they, we can build the bridges that cross those canyons. So op those optional features, and they will be optional, include onboarding, identity verification, identity orchestration, and even more powerful authentication techniques to secure and protect personally identifiable information. So thanks to David for joining us on his first appearance on Cardano 360, and big congratulations to the entire Atala team at IOG. At the time of recording this uh, special edition, they just announced their open source collaboration with Hyperledger. And yes, this is my shameless plug to tune into January's Essential Cardano 360 to get the latest on that from the Atala team. So I hope you're all still with me. The year hasn't quite finished yet and it's exhausting just looking back. So do make sure you like, subscribe and hit that bell to get this video out there so others can get a taste for what a remarkable year it's been for Cardano. November was another epochal month with six birthday celebrations and the Cardano Summit taking centre stage. Charles announced the new Cardano Partner Chains framework and invited Midnight CEO Iran Burak to share an update and announce the launch of the Midnight DevNet. It was the builders helping shape Cardano's future that really took centre stage at the summit and we'll meet a few of them in a second. But on a similar theme, November also saw the launch of Catalyst Fund 11 and the Cardano Ballot go live a poll to help temperature check the latest stage in the on-chain governance frameworks being built with SIP 1694. And a shout out to the collaboration between DripDrops and Summon, who also threw their hat in the ring with a poll mechanism designed to support hardware wallets and CLI. Now let's hear from Axo Trade, MinSwap, Iagon, Atrium Lab and Optim from the summit. My name is Eric Hiniak. I'm the founder of Axo and AXO is a protocol born from rural need in the rural world. So my background is I've worked 10 years in traditional finance, mm -hmm. uh, working for the biggest market makers in the world, uh, working directly with uh, traditional exchanges. And through that process, I've seen a lot of things that could be improved both from the development perspective, but also from the user perspective. And I accumulated all those observations from over 10 years. And I've wrote, as you know, at the AXO white paper two years ago. Mm -hmm. And, you know, as is recently, a month ago, we released our testnet. So, you know, like the proofs of hard work are coming out. And in a nutshell, what AXO is, it's next generation trading protocol, which means you have even much better tooling than Binance, but at the same time, everything you do is completely decentralized and in control. Yeah, I've talked today for a quite large market maker on the summit and been showing them uh, the interface. Mm -hmm. And they immediately like seeing what it means, right? Just like because it was so intuitive. Yeah. But the interesting thing is I've also, of course, talked to people who aren't from the trading background. Mm -hmm. And I think I was very able to, in a simple manner, explain to them exactly what it does. Yeah. And I think that's the experience I've brought from trading that I would like to share with people. That you don't feel it's like an overwhelming journey, but something exciting. And then as you follow the steps, you learn something at every step and you understand what's going on. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Well, so with that said, uh, you know, you've been showing it to people. Obviously, you launched the testnet recently. Yes. Um, so what have you been hearing from people? Uh, I have to tell you, and I'm not bragging, I've <laughs> never seen such a positive uh, reply. We had such an overwhelming, excited uh, response on uh, Twitter and other social media. Yeah. I've been really impressed, actually, to the team internally. I've just snapshot. I'm not even kidding. Yeah. 100 comments from Twitter, all super positive because I wanted to everybody who works on AXO to know uh, how great work we've done. And it was a bit tough because we kept silent for the last six months because yes. we said, you know, like, what's the point of trying to convince you we're just going to keep silent and bring the tickets to the table. And I'm really glad from this approach. And I think also it's a bit unique in the space because mm -hmm. it's so tempting to take the shortcut. But if you 
uh, refuse this temptation, mm -hmm. the reward is really sweet. Uh, so my name is Long. I'm the co-founder and uh, the lead engineer at MinSwap. Mm -hmm. And MinSwap is the biggest uh, decentralized exchange on the Cardano blockchain. Um, so now we are launching V2 and mm -hmm. with like, exciting features and improvements. Yeah, and so you've been in the Cardano ecosystem now for several years. Uh, when did you start developing MinSwap? Yeah, so uh, MinSwap started development on March 2021. And we put our first uh, Catalyst pro proposal and social media on April 2021. Wow, yeah. 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 Then uh, after we keep developing and then we launched one year later around March 2022. So mm -hmm. one and a half year ago, we launched on Mainnet. Yeah, and now uh, I understand you have a big new update. Yeah. Uh, what's, what's going on with MinSwap now? Yeah, so the biggest update is a smart contract upgrade. Mm -hmm. uh, it will, will write the smart contract in ICANN uh, using Bluetooth V2. And it uh -huh. will like, bring uh, more uh, throughput and speed improvement. And we can uh, like do more feature in the contract. Mm -hmm. So it will um, allow more exciting feature like uh, dynamic fee, uh, multiple routing, um, that okay. now, and like advanced order type. And what, what new sort of functionalities or new user experience will that bring to users of MinSwap? Yeah, yeah. So let me explain. So the first is dynamic fee is uh, yeah, the, the fee is uh, dynamic, um, mm -hmm. so we cannot like uh, spoil too much about this. But basically, the fee is not like fixed anymore. Yeah. Like it's, it can be like uh, variable to give better experience to cheddar and liquidity providers. Yeah. Uh, the second is multi-pool routing. Um, okay. Multi-pool routing is, uh, so for example, now we want to trade like from uh, mean to LQ, you have to uh, like trade on mean ADA pool first, and then you swap sure. from ADA to LQ. But with multi pool routing, like you can swap from mean to ADA to LQ in one single order. Yeah, nice. So a lot yeah. of efficiency improvements. Yeah, yeah. And the next one is uh, advanced order type. So currently, we hardly have market order and limit order, mm -hmm. but to uh, cater to the more advanced uh, trader users we are having, uh, we are going to have uh, something like uh, take profit order, um, okay. stop loss order, OCO orders. Mm. So, like the more advanced thing that you, that you make decision with your trade. And so, uh, you know, when can people look forward to this uh, coming? Is this in the, in the near future? Is this something that you're developing sort of under wraps at the moment? Or? Yeah, yeah, yeah it, it, in the near future, like stay tuned for, for the Okay, for, for the announcement. Yeah, yeah, yeah. that's great. Uh, so, how can people get involved in, uh, in MinSwap? Yeah, so now we can go to uh, minswap.org slash v2. Mm -hmm. And then uh, you can uh, see all the new exciting features and the UI updates there. And then you can, at the bottom, you can uh, submit a form to apply for the beta testing. Ah, uh, great, for V2 yeah. of yeah, MinSwap. Yeah, yeah. yeah, great. And they should follow you on Twitter? Yeah. They should... Yeah, Twitter is uh, MinSwapDex. Well, Long, thank you so much for joining us. And yeah, it's a really great to, you know, get to share more widely what you're doing. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Thank you so much. Yeah, all right. Uh, appreciate it. Thanks, yeah. man. Yeah, I appreciate it. My name is Navji Jollywal. I'm the CEO of Igon, and we're building a secure, private, uh, decentralized cloud service, uh, which also had adhered to compliance and uh, regulatory frameworks, and focusing on user sovereignty, operational sovereignty for users and enterprises. So, how we do it differently is we learn the behavior of each resource provider. So, what a resource provider is as someone who provides their idle capacity like storage or compute to the network like yeah. Iagon, and in return they earn rewards uh, in, in our form at IAG tokens. And how we do it differently is we learn the behavior of these nodes uh, in terms of performance, availability, trustability, mm -hmm. uh, location, which is important for compliance. So yeah. this is the things that we protected in 2018 with a patent uh, to, to for our time and investment that we've done in the project so far. And so if Iagon is, you know, as fully successful as it can be, if it you know, reaches its full potential, uh, how does the world change? It's uh, drastically changes because right now, uh, if we get the adoption that we need, think about uh, how uh, bigger players like AWS, Google, and giants misuse customer data mm. and making a lot of money. Even Facebook, for example, is the biggest culprit of misusing private information to make, mm. a, make a profit. 
Mm -hmm. And unfortunately, a lot of the data, there's been data breaches every two weeks, every week, you'll see like something with a new information with data breaches. And we think that what this would do in the future, if Igon gets adopted, it would give the power back to the user, mm. the company, full operation sovereignty over your data. You control mm. your data. It's private. Only you give access if you want to, to anyone else. So what's the current state of Igon? Yeah, so we, we just, uh, we're ready at mainnet, but mm -hmm. uh, we haven't launched the solution yet because uh, we're just going through some audits. Okay. Yeah. We just previewed our uh, Leisure Flow app in, uh, in one of my pitches today earlier. Okay, yeah. And um, we are, we're basically ready to go. It's just we're waiting for the audits. And next, uh, this month, we'll also be looking at decentralized web hosting. And uh, in Q1 next year, what we're going to be focusing on is decentralized compute. What's the most exciting uh, sort of industry change that you anticipate will come from a decentralized storage solution like Igon being successful? The biggest thing that will come is that you would have empower the users with everything, right? You can mm -hmm. do shared, um, you can share your things if you want, but for profit, for revenue. Um, so shared yeah. revenue model, right? Okay. There's some powerful stuff that you can do with this for sure. I think the main thing for Web3 space would be that we can get on, on board Web2 clients because uh, they are interested in solutions at the kind of the first layers that an infrastructure is very important layer mm -hmm. for any Web3 project or Web2 project in okay. the technical field. So I think that it's important. Uh, it, it'll be an important tool to have to get Web2 customers to come to the Web3 space because infrastructure should be and is the kind of common uh, thing that everyone needs yeah. in any tech industry. So cloud uh, storage and compute will always be there. It's ever-growing demand for it. Mm -hmm. And I think that uh, once this landscape changes uh, for a decentralized aspect, then we can actually call ourselves Web3. Because technically, if we're not, if we're using Web two infrastructure, uh, infrastructure yeah. we're not really Web three. Yeah. We're still Web two. <laughs> yeah. So it, it changes a lot. Then we can actually say we're Web three. You know. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. So you, you'll be backfilling that for us. Yes. Right? Yes. <laughs> yeah. 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 Okay. <clears throat> and so, what's the first thing that people will be able to access uh, on on Iacon? Uh, so the first thing uh, that we access is the decentralized storage, something like a Dropbox solution mm -hmm. for the private customers and also for projects which are able to integrate an API to their system and use the Iagon network, uh, decentralized storage network. And also we'll be releasing Ledger Flow DAP, which will be, uh, you'll be able to create a transaction, bulk transaction, send invoices, okay. receive invoices, uh, eventually reoccurring payments. Uh, which will allow to manage and, and manage in a multi-sig as well. So you can create a multi-sig, yeah. uh, adjust the multi-sig, and able to manage your funds as a project and your billing as a project. Oh, wow. And even as a personal person. Yeah. So this is a great tool for Web3 community. Uh, and these dApps that we're building are using the infrastructure that we've laid out. That's great. Yeah. So where should people follow you? Where should they you know, watch your updates for you know, being able to participate? Well, iagon.com, uh, all our socials are listed there, and you guys can check it out there and you know, follow us through Twitter. Our Twitter's pretty active. We have a great uh, marketing team, and we, yeah. we've been pushing since our testnet launch. We've been active in terms of the testnet participants. We have a little bit over 700 nodes, uh, a, little over, uh, a little over also 700 terabytes of data available uh, for end users as well. So very successful testnet. And uh, we'd encourage everyone to check it out and participate Great. and hopefully main that soon. <laughs> yeah, well, Navji, thank you so much for talking with me today. Thank you for having me. Yeah. yeah. My name is Peyton. Uh, I also go by Big Pay. I'm a content creator for Cardano. I'm the co-founder of Bloom, co-founder of Rare Bloom, co-founder of Mycelial Gallery, and now Atrium Lab. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, what is Atrium Lab? So Atrium Lab is one platform that aggregates the various financial services into one, like swapping, lending, uh, you know, synthetic assets, 
And you know, everything you use on Cardano, the issue that I've seen is people have to go to seven or eight or nine or 10 different websites to get education, to actually perform these swaps, to set up a wallet. And it's just too much for the average person. They don't have time. They're working many hours to provide for their family. So we're gonna take all of the things that they need and aggregate it into one platform that teaches you how to use it with easy motion graphic videos. And on top of that aggregation, we're actually releasing two core products into Atrium that have never been seen before on Cardano. The first one's called Staking Baskets, and the second yeah. one's called User Account NFTs. Yeah. Can you tell us a little bit more about those two? Yeah, yeah, sure. So Staking Baskets are a smart contract that allow you to delegate to multiple different stake pools at the same time, yeah. and you're going to earn Cardano native tokens plus your ADA staking rewards for supporting these different ah. pools in the basket. And we want to demo how Staking Baskets actually work because it's a new concept coming mm -hmm. to Cardano. So the way that we're demoing it is our own staking basket that's owned by the Atrium DAO, and it's called Diffusion. Diffusion delegates to 50 different single stake pool operators at the same time, and you'll earn the mm -hmm. Atrium DAO token that you can use to vote on the composition of the basket, yeah. and you'll also earn your state ADA staking rewards for supporting Cardano's you know, decentralization and 50 small businesses at the same time. But if you don't like the idea of Diffusion, that's okay, because you can come in and create your own staking basket with your own composition of pools with your own Cardano native token reward. SBOs mm -hmm. can come together if you're a good marketer, if you're a good business guy, you know, if, you, yeah. if you're somebody that you know, has a different audience in a different country and a different audience in America, you can come together to market the same mission and both benefit at the same time while having a stronger business and a stronger group of pools while all remaining single stake pool operators mm -hmm. at the same time. Yeah, I know that's a major uh, you know, issue and a major also desire in the Cardano community is to be able to support many SPOs and for specific causes. Mm -hmm. So what's the second uh, product that you're bringing? So we're trying to introduce Socialify into Cardano, and we think that needs to live in this all-in-one platform with the education built into it. What mm -hmm. users are going to be able to do is they're going to be able to come into Atrium in the bottom right-hand or the you know, top right-hand corner, it's going to say Mint Account NFT. Once you do that, you're going to have some customization options pop up. You'll be able to type in your token name, and that's what people are going to be able to send to. They'll be able to type in, you know, at pay and send ADA to me, or, you know, at you and send ADA to you. And uh, they'll be able to have a description, you know, a background image, and uh, you'll be able to level these NFTs up over time. And when you level them up, you're going to unlock different backgrounds and different customization options in season one. And then, you know, in season two, you're going to have your own profile page that lives in atrium.io. So it could be atrium.io forward slash pay, and you'll see my own page with my own picture and my own background. Mm -hmm. And I'll show you what I love about Cardano, my favorite platforms, my favorite DEXs. Maybe I have an NFT listed on there. And I can use that account to actually follow project accounts. And projects can actually create accounts in our social fi to incentivize users' actions. They say, hey, check out our Twitter or, you know, hey, follow us. And projects will be able to message their token holders. They'll be able to aggregate their Medium, their Twitter, yeah. their, their YouTube, all into one application so that, you know, you don't have to go anywhere else to check, you know, on Cardano. We're trying to be the heart of Cardano in the sense that, you know, you log into Atrium in the morning because you're excited to see what's new and you see little notifications in the corner. Oh, you know, World Mobile did something awesome, as they always do. And, yeah. you know, Sunday Swap released this new open source smart contract. So, you know, that really is what it is. It's, um, you know, these NFTs are actually accounts that are minted by a smart contract and the customization data is held in datums. And, you know, you'll be able to update those datums without burning the NFT. So yeah. users will own their data, they'll own their accounts, and it will live in their wallet. Uh, so a personalized on-chain account for your, all your Cardano activity. Exactly. Right. And yeah. you know, projects will have the same ability as well with more nice. customization options. Oh, great. And so uh, you know, as a final wrap-up question here, what is your vision for the user experience of Cardano? So you know, this, uh, you know, I've helped onboard 10,000 people to Cardano, whether it be locally or with my you know, YouTube videos. And I've seen that you know, crypto is a little bit complicated. It takes time. Yeah. And uh, what we're trying to do is remove that time, that time investment that it takes, because you just go to one place and it'll guide you through your experience. It sees you don't have an NFT. It tells you what an NFT is, how to mint one. It sees you've mm -hmm. never swapped by looking at your wallet data. So we're hoping that you know, when your grandma asks you, you know, what do you do for a living, Matthew? Mm -hmm. You can just say, yeah. here's Atrium. This is what Cardano is. This is what blockchain is. This is the impact that it has on the world. So yeah. we see a year from now that Atrium will onboard the next million users to Cardano, and it will be a very easy user experience, and the people that do onboard through Atrium will be much more educated. Great. How do people get involved? Join Atrium or discord.gg forward slash Atrium Lab. Follow Atrium on Twitter. Uh, we're doing an incentivized test net. Our alpha is launched already. Uh, so you can apply to be in our alpha. We're going to open up beta and let everybody come in and try staking baskets for the first time. Both of those smart contracts I mentioned are done. We have the dashboard in alpha, and we're coming to mainnet very soon.
Okay, well, great, and great to connect. Hey, thank you so much for sharing with us about Atrium. Yeah, it's always a pleasure, Matthew. Thank you. Zygo, good to sit down with you. Uh, what's your role at Optum? At Optum, I'm the tech part, tech part of the core team. I oversee the development and design of Optum protocols, including having designed the Optum Bonds protocol, which mm -hmm. right now sits at top four TVO in Cardano. It's, it's nice. seen rapid growth and great do degree of adoption between substantial ADA holders looking for an extra yield on their stake while yeah. keeping the ADA with them for long periods of time. And, uh, as we call it colloquially, degens who are yeah. looking to acquire leverage and stake into an ISPO or you know, other things they could do with it. And so during this process, you've been developing solutions uh, for yourself, um, but also thinking about how that works in favor of the Cardano ecosystem. Is that, is that right? Yes, yes. We, we saw a great opportunity, I would yeah. call it, in um, the way people have uh, used ISPOs and how inefficient they are as a tool for projects to acquire funding and as a tool for uh, uh, potential token holders to uh, acquire those tokens. It's, it's, yeah. it's very inefficient because it goes through Cardano's uh, fairly timid, let's call it, staking yield. So mm -hmm. basically, if you put in 100 ADA into staking, you can right now expect, you know, 3% of next year, over next year, which kind of gets reduced by uh, lowering emissions, to make it to the recipient. Even if it's like 99% uh, sort of fee pool, yeah. which which what ISPOs are using. So... Yeah. To, to sort of convert that sort of process for somebody who wants to like, have high capital efficiency on their capital allocation, they need to convert, and they need to acquire a high degree of leverage. They need somebody who actually ha holds that pile of ADA to sort of stake it with, the, with their key. Yeah. With the key of the person that wants to acquire that leverage. Mm -hmm. But obviously, you know, there needs to be a marketplace for that sort of uh, connecting needs and wants. And that's what Optim Bonds are. They connect needs and wants by way of borrowers bidding on the APY fixed that they are willing to provide to mm -hmm. lenders for that period of time that they want. And there's like a time lock basically on that ADA on the lender side where the borrower can be assured that this ADA will stay with them for that long. Well, that's a wrap. And as the year comes to a close, we hope you've enjoyed taking a look back at just some of the highlights from the year. And we've certainly enjoyed revisiting them. So here's to another remarkable year in 2024 for Cardano. We'll be back in January with another 360 for more updates. So make sure you hit that subscribe button so you don't miss them. Have a very happy holiday season and let's all raise a glass together to celebrate everything that we've achieved together in 2023. 2024, here we come. Hello and welcome to your February edition of 360. Now you may have noticed, nah, 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 nah. nah. Today I'm joined by uh, sorry, I, I need to I need to start again. Thank you, James, for such an inspiring remarks. <laughs> what kind of impact it creates in Cardano e ecosystem? Why did I need to flinch in the last second? I'm sorry. There's no central. Um, uh, let's try this again. I'm Matthew Caps, community manager here at IOG. Uh, no. So what does the sandbox announcement, and wow, why can't I speak? Uh, la, 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 la. That's so exciting. <laughs> <laughs> so tell us about your project and what are you, what is your mission? I'm going to redo that part. I'm here today to talk about all things that happen with Lace in June. Um, is it June or May? Can we start again? Oh, you're froze. It's June, right? This is June. I'm good. <laughs> we provide a grant. Uh, hang on. Let me start again. Hang on, let me start again. Uh, and all, all the, uh, sorry, that last bit went really badly. I'm going to start that point again. We're also working, let me start over. At the beginning of the month, uh, we got full, I keep saying, ah, I need to stop doing that. <sighs> follow us on midnight, uh, follow us on Twitter, midnight. No, it's midnight Twitter. It was great to meet a lot of members of the Sorry. As community, 
to uh sorry <laughs> i can't read that it's a shorter show than usual with more no oh, i've written this wrong i hate it when i write it wrong it's a short i bobbed too much there this one will be the one could you turn your camera off it's actually putting me off seeing you move around sorry to be such a prima donna <laughs> I think that's it, isn't it? I think we're done. Oh. Yeah. Oh. Excuse me. Me, that was a marathon.